So welcome to this video tutorial which is looking at the completion of the National Early Warning Score Chart version 2. And the purpose of this uh, video is to provide you with some supplementary guidance on completion of the chart and that's in addition to any face-to-face -face training that you do regarding this skill. It's important to make you aware that there may be some local guidance um, on completion of the News 2 chart as there may be some specific differences between trust areas that you're working in. I'm also going to signpost you towards the Royal College of Physicians website. So that's www.rcplondon.ac.uk. And on here you can see that there's several electronic resources in relation to News 2. And the one that I'm going to highlight there for you is access to the News 2 e-learning tool. So do remember when you click on this link, it will ask you to uh, sign up for an e-learning programme account. And do you have your trust email address as this will allow you to access the resource for free. So if we go back and have a look at the uh, News 2 chart, I thought it was important just to remind you about the importance of early warning score systems in the care of your patient. So remember the News 2 chart does support your assessment of acute illness severity in your patients. It will help to improve the detection of clinical deterioration and there it will also lead to initiation of a timely and competent clinical response to your patient's needs. So from the, uh, looking at the chart, you can see that there's some key updates to the News 2 chart. And the first of those is that the physiological parameters have now been reordered to align with the Resource Council UK's ABCDE sequence. So we can see under airway and breathing, we have respirations and SpO2. Under circulation, then we have blood pressure and pulse. Under disability, you have a level of consciousness. And then under exposure, you have temperature. There is now a scale one and scale two in relation to SpO2. And throughout this tutorial, we'll explain where you use scale one and when you use scale two. There's a dedicated box for recording whether the patient is on air or oxygen. And then down at the bottom of the chart, the level of consciousness now uh, includes new onset of confusion. So do remember that that also includes any new uh, disorientation in your patient any new onset delirium or any new alterations to the patient's mental state. So if we have a look at recording uh, the individual clinical observations for your patient, so do remember just like any chart, you have to ensure that you have uh, recorded the patient's details. I'm going to record name, date of birth, and then also date of admission. Don't forget about date and time of your observations. And now we can look at the individual parameters. So I'm going to tell you that the patient's respirations came back at 16 breaths per minute. So we can see under each parameter now, it gives you the range of um, clinical observations. And this patient's respirations were 16 breaths per minute. So we're going to put a dot here in the box 15 to 17. The patient is uh, breathing on room air at present and their saturations are 97%. Now we have a scale one and scale two here. So just to explain that you will use scale one for the majority of your patients with a normal target saturation of 94 to 98%. Scale two then will be reserved for patients with a target range of 88 to 92% and who have or are at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure. And some clear instructions here in relation to only using scale two under the direction of a qualified clinician. To avoid any confusion then, the guidance um, says that we should cross out the scale that's not in use to avoid any um, chance of error. So this patient's uh, saturations on room air came back at uh, 97%. So we're just going to record that on scale one and we're putting a dot here in the above 96% of the 
oxygen saturations. Because we're not using scale 2 then, we're just going to cross that out. The next box down then is to document whether the patient is on air or oxygen. So in this case, the patient is on air, so we record an A in this box. If the patient was on oxygen therapy, then there's two bits of information that you have to record in this section. So the first one is the uh, flow rate of oxygenation that the patient is receiving, and that's O2 in litres per minute. The second thing that you have to record then is the oxygen delivery device, and that refers to the British thoracic um, O2 delivery device codes. So just to show you those there, uh, they are available in the British Thoracic Society guidelines in relation to emergency use of oxygen. So table five here has the codes for the oxygen delivery devices. So if we take it that um, the patient could be on um, nasal specs at two litres. We can see here on the list, the code for nasal specs is N. And then if we go back to our chart here, we can look at how we would record that. So just for a second here, I'm just going to remove the A for air. And we're going to look at how we actually record if the patient was on oxygen. So under uh, O2 litres per minute, we can put in 2L. And then under the delivery device via nasal specs, it's N. So do remember in relation to the patient's overall uh, new score, if the patient is on any form of oxygen, they get an additional score of 2 and that's added to the total news score. So I'm just going to remove this again. And replace the A. Looking at blood pressure then, um, you will record both the systolic and diastolic blood pressures for your patient. But based on the information on the chart, you only use the systolic blood pressure score for the calculation of the patient's new score. So in relation to the blood pressure recorded, we have a blood pressure here of 125 over 75. So in relation to recording that, then 125 goes in there for systolic blood pressure and the 75 here for the diastolic. It's an upward arrow for the systolic downward arrow for diastolic and then we join the two. So we've recorded both the systolic and diastolic but remember it's only the systolic blood pressure that we use to calculate the new score for blood pressure. Moving down to pulse then um, I'm going to tell you that the patient's pulse here is um, 109 beats per minute so we can see that that would be in the range of 101 to 110. 109 beats per minute, a dot here. The next parameter that we have to think about then is level of consciousness. And in this case, the uh, patient is alert. So again, we put a dot here. Finally, patient's temperature comes back at 36.7. So we're going to put a dot in the range 36.1 to 37. So that's us recorded the six um, clinical observation parameters for our patient. So you can see that they are recorded there in the column. And what we're going to do now is look at the calculation of the total new score for our patient. So you can see here that there's a coding system in relation to uh, the observations that we have recorded. In the white, then, this is considered to be normal parameters for the adult patient and that would give a score of zero. And then in relation to the magnitude of deviation from normal, the scoring goes from one up to three. So we can see for a score of one, that's yellow. For a score of two, that's orange. And a score of three is red. So if we work our way through each of the parameters, easiest way to look at the scoring here is to go along the line. So for a respiratory rate of 16 breaths per minute, we're going to go along from this line here 
and we get a score of zero. For SpO2 then, we can see that the saturations for the patient are sitting at 97% uh, on room air. So again, that gives us a score of zero. Patient is on air in this case. So again, that gives us a score of zero. Blood pressure for the patient is 125 over 75. And remember here again, it's only the systolic blood pressure that we use to calculate the new score for blood pressure. So again, systolic blood pressure of uh, 125 gives us a score of zero. The pulse for the patient then was 109 beats per minute. So in this case, we're in the yellow zone and that gives us a score of one for the patient. Under level of consciousness, the patient is alert. So again, that gives us a score of zero. And the temperature for the patient is 36.7. So we're going to go along here and that gives us a score of zero. So the total new score for this particular patient is one. And that will be recorded here in the news total. Final thing that we have to look at here is the monitoring frequency for the patient, whether we're going to need to escalate the care of the patient. And we also have to ensure that we have recorded the vital signs. So if we refer over to our clinical response table, we can see here that that clearly sets out the new scores from zero up to seven or more. It gives you guidance in relation to the frequency of monitoring based on the patient's new score and also then guidance in relation to the clinical response for each of the new scores. So in relation to our score of one, we fall into the category of one to four and the recommendations in relation to frequency of monitoring are four to six hourly. Clinical response then is for the uh, registered nurse to be informed who must then come and assess the patient. And then the registered nurse must decide if there's an increased frequency of monitoring required and or if the escalation uh, of care is required for that patient. So if we go back to the news 2 chart, then we can see that can then be recorded. So after assessing the patient, I'm going to record the observations four hourly from this point. I'm not going to escalate the care at this point in time and I'm going to initial that I've completed the observations on the patient. So you can see here that we have a completed set of observations on the patient. Next set of observations are gonna be done in the next four hours. And then obviously it's important that you don't just monitor the individual observations for your patient, but you also think about any trends in relation to uh, deterioration. Do keep that in mind that this is supplementary to your assessment of the patient. And if there is any concern um, about your patient's condition, that you do escalate that concern early. Thank you for your time. And if there's any further questions, they can be answered in the face-to-face -face sessions.